Just uh, <laughs> west of Plymouth. Oh, okay. Northwest of Plymouth. Well, that explains it. Mm -hmm. See, yeah. I learned something. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Omni Edition Sports presents from Garden City High School in Garden City, Michigan. This is Cougar football. Tonight, the Cougars take on the Trojans from Livonia Clarenceville. Hello and welcome. I'm Evan Chapman alongside Tell Ted Fournier. Oh, geez, oh, Pete's. We're off to a good start, Ted. The Trojans come, <laughs> Trojans come in 0-3 on the season. Garden City is 2-1, 2-0 in the division and looking a very formidable opponent. Ted, how do you think the Garden City is going to do today against the Trojans? Well, this is going to be a telling game because of some of the opponents that they've already played. Uh, Redford Union's not uh, an extremely uh, difficult opponent. And Annapolis is in and out. Uh, you know, you never know where they're going to come from. I know Annapolis lost a uh, big in their opening game. So this is a telling game. Uh, an 0-3 uh, Clarenceville. The real, the real opportunity here for Garden City is to get their third victory, which would be half, uh, halfway to being play, playoff eligible. And so this is an important game. Uh, you got to beat the uh, teams you should beat, and this is a uh, uh, game Garden City should uh, should win. Certainly, and Garden City already 2-0 and in the division, beating Redford Union and Annapolis in Western Wayne Nor or, uh, Red Division. That's what it is, Red. And, uh, you know, we'll see how they uh, they fare against this 0-3 Livonia Clarenceville team, uh, which certainly from a small school, obviously, Livonia Clarenceville, not a huge attendance there. Uh, but they're able to field about 32 players for their football team. Here's the kick. That's Johnson. The kick. One bounce to the returner here. Up to the 20. And bottled up there by Garden City. Nowhere to go. That's Jermel Johnson with the return. The senior, six foot one, 168. Big kid. Johnson got absolutely no support. The, uh, the blockers for Clarenceville just let the blue tide go right through him. And he, uh, as soon as he picked up the ball, he was in trouble. Uh, watching Clarenceville start uh, warming up, they look like they'll come out of the veer. They'll run some eye under center, some pistol, some shotgun, some three uh, receivers uh, on either side. So uh, whatever uh, Coach Fry wants to call here, we'll see, Evan. And uh, Jonathan Hogan is their senior quarterback, going to be under center here. Takes a snap, hands it off to the second back, and he dives forward for about two yards, maybe three, if you're generous. That was number. Hill on the carry, yeah, ran out to the uh, uh, left side of the formation, simple eye formation play, gets a lead blocker, and uh, picked up the, the announcer here. We're going to have to go with our boss, Dan. <laughs> he said that he got four, so uh, it's second and six. Okay, second and six then for the Trojans. Hogan under center. Turns, hands it off to the up back. Able to get a first down there all the way down to about the 33. And that's Reese Santoy with the carry. He's another senior and he's uh, the fullback for the Trojans. Got good, uh, good surge. He uh, started right up the middle, right over where the nose guard was and uh, got good surge and uh, got the first down. 
Hogan up under center. Garden City looking for the run, and they'll get it. That's uh, Hill once again. Able to dive forward for about three. Stephen Fox, number 40, stuck his nose in there and made the initial hit. He got some help by the rest of his teammates after that, but he was the first one to plug up that hole. And it looks like Garden City is going to be playing the run for the most part against this uh, Trojan offense. A lot of guys stacked up in the box, not expecting them, I don't think, to throw. Well, they only have two wide receivers on the field. Hogan will take the snap, hand it off to the up back once again, and he is bottled up quick. That's Santoy. Matt in the backfield. I'm trying to get the number of the first gentleman that got him. He's getting congratulated. I think it was big old number 99. That's uh, Johnson, who also we saw kick the ball off at the beginning of the game. And he also plays some running back as well as a tight end for the Garden City offense. You were talking about uh, the men in the box. Well, Garden City had 10 and a half in the box that time. 10 and a half. One guy stri uh, straddling, and I think they got all 11 in the box right now. Oh, yes. Like I said, looks like they're going to be playing the run. And uh, there's a flag. And uh, looks like a false start on Livonia Clarenceville. So that's five yards. They're going to march him back. And it is uh, third down. It was third down and seven. And we're going to move on to a third down and 12. Tough to convert. Able to run it up the middle. You know, they've had a little bit of success so far. But uh, maybe you have to throw the ball here. Clarenceville, a once proud program a um, decade back or maybe 15 years back, the home uh, program from N NFL or Tim Shaw, who we'll talk about a little later, out of the pistol this time. Yeah. They got three wide receivers in the field and two. Ryan Hogan under uh, pressure, able to get taken down. I saw number 70 for Garden City get part of that tackle. That's Jacob Gass, the junior as well as uh, somebody else got in their nose in there. I didn't quite catch who it was, but uh, it'll be fourth down and 11. Garden City's having absolutely no trouble shredding that offensive line. The offensive line for uh, Livonia is stocky, but not very tall and uh, not very big. And Garden City's just running right through. And we're it'll be Cardoza to take to punt the ball to Garden City. And it's a high snap, and it's over his head. And he runs back to get it, tries to get the punt off, gets a little bouncing squib-type punt, and it'll stop at about the 43. So bad snap does not do any favors for this Livonia Clarenceville and uh, football team. And Cardoza able to get it away, at least. He didn't end up with it, you know, getting a safety or getting it uh, grabbed by Garden City. Well, he picked that ball up inside the five. He took one step to his left and then gave you one of those late night uh, New Zealand rugby kicks <laughs> and it got out over the 40. So actually you give him credit because uh, they're 35, 37 yards uh, farther down the field than they could have been and uh, great play by the punter. Yeah, way to, way to um, get a handle on that. Now we got Kyler Hubs under center and he surges forward on the keeper. I don't want. I don't know how much. Uh, watch the punt here. You'll see him. It was over his head, and he picks it up on the five, and then he takes that step toward their, his own sideline and sidewinds it, and he gets it out to the 43, which is very 38 yard or, or 35 yards from where he hit it. Picked it up. Hubs hangs off. Hands off to Seegers. There is able to get. Maybe lost, maybe lost a yard or two. We're going to call that third and seven. And I'm listening to Dan York, too, over here. Our boss doing, uh, 60, doing PA. 69 looked a little shaken up. Maybe his hand or something, the uh, left tackle for uh, Garden City. Hubs pitches it to Seegers, and he able to snake his way almost to a first down. That'll be... Uh, probably just about a yard short of the first. Good view, uh, verb there. It, he did snake it. He went left, right, left, and he got through there. He snuck through it. Fourth and one, and Hub surges forward. Looks like he's got it on the keeper. And uh, Garden City's 
line really doing the job there, getting a good push so they can get that first down on fourth and one. So new set of downs for Garden City. Still 0-0 here in the first half. Garden City has England at the center, and they've run right behind him tw twice. Uh, Campbell and Edney are at the guards, and Haley and Asensio at the tackles. And those, uh, look, everybody's tight. I mean, they're, they're, there's nobody split out. And Hubs hands this one off to number 44, Gian Grande, the and sophomore uh, for Garden City. Gian Grande just gets surrounded by that offensive line and they wind up about seven yards or six and a half yards down. Look at that, nobody is split out in an I formation and they're just surrounding the back and just going forward. Hubs hands it off there. And uh, it's, it's almost as if he's, they're just daring Clarenceville to stop them. Just stop us on the run. Well, I, I, if you match offensive versus defensive line, yeah, the big uglies for Garden City are just gonna <laughs> Uh, take Clarenceville down the down the field here. It, there's no, it's a mismatch at every position. Oh, I'm tight ends are in. <laughs> they're, they're playing with three tight ends. This is, this is about as big as a big set you can know. get. Hubs takes the snap here, fakes the handoff and a little pitch and fumbled. I don't know. I, I'd say that that was uh, never really handled there on the outside. I didn't quite catch who was that. Well, it was really a bad pitch. Hubs. Did not use right technique on that. Pitched it, it was actually a forward pass. It was in front of him, and uh, it just was bad technique all the way around. He, he, he did not, he kind of just pushed it with his uh, right hand, and uh, you know, I'm sure that'll be coached on Monday. Oh, certainly get in the film room and uh, check it out. That was to Seegers, and he was unable to come up with it. Fourth and three here, and uh, Garden City is going for it. Pitch out to Seegers and once again cannot come up with the That was exchange. behind him. That was behind him. Yeah. The first one was in front of him and, and trying to get a little fancy and uh, they stopped themselves. Do not, I, you know, I would not give credit to Clarenceville on that. That was uh, uh, missed uh, handling the ball twice in a while. One shoved down low and in front of the ball carrier and that one behind him. And you cannot stop a ball carrier's momentum and expect him to pick up yardage. Garden City turns over on downs. Hogan for Clarenceville take the snap. They got three wide now, which is uh, something we did not see on their first series, but once. It looks like Hogan to pass, heaves it up on a little post route, overthrows his intended receiver. That's number three, Elijah Bean. Elijah Bean was about two steps slow on that. He was behind the secondary. By, I buy a step, but if that, that ball was two steps further on down the field, and make a note of that, they'll probably go back to that at some point. Mm -hmm. he, had, uh, he had a little space there to maybe make something happen, uh, maybe a step on his uh, the cornerback covering him. Hogan looks like he's about to throw again. They left early, the right, uh, right fullback. I think the Dead ball foul, left. ball start on the offense. There'll be a five-yard penalty, replay team. down. Uh, now, I want you to look at this, Evan. Uh -huh. When the uh, defense gets set up, that long pass has moved the safety back already for Garden City and opened up a little space between the line and the linebackers. And that and that pass might have been just a purpose pass to open up some running room. And uh, Watch the, the safety is definitely farther back on that last play than he had been. That safety is number six, Nick Clark, although now he's going to cover the slot receiver. And uh, Hogan back, four receivers split out, one wide, one next to him, or one running back next to him. Hogan going to pass, throws it, he's got it complete. That's once again number three, Bean, able to get the first down for Livonia Clarenceville. Nice pass on a nice route. And the thing I noticed right there, and I don't know if you saw this, Phil, or excuse me, Ted. <laughs> Last game I called was with Phil. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but he looked off his, fir his first target. He looked target. off, and he just ran mm -hmm. somebody underneath. The linebackers were backed up another couple steps. The safety, like you noted, was in the slot, Clark, and the, there was an underneath opening, and he hit that purpose perfectly. And uh, here Hogan hands off up the middle, and they're able to get two yards, I think I'll say, and that's number 22, James Hill, on the carry. 40, Stephen Fox was on the bottom of that pile again. 
I think he's got a bit of a nose for the uh, nose for the ball there. He seems to be around it a lot. And Garden City getting set up. And looks like we got trips on the left side here. Hogan with the keeper runs up the middle, off left tackle. Flag is thrown. Flag thrown in right in the pile. Usually is a hold. Yeah, that would be uh, my guess as well, Ted. And uh, we're going to hear from uh, our referee. Holding on the offense. Now, it is a hold. Don't we look like psychics? Well, you know, you're as old as me and you've seen 800 football games uh, on this field alone. Yeah, that'll, <laughs> that'll, uh, that'll give you a little insight for sure. There have been games where there were flags on every play. <laughs> Holding on the offense, that's, that's a 10-yard like like penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay, second year, down. There was flags on every special teams play. It was just special teams play. It was really strange. Hogan comes back to the line. They've got second and 15 here to go. Everybody's Hogan. in the box. Got a couple guys split out wide. Looks like it might be a screen. Hogan in trouble. Hogan taken down. That's a sack for Garden City on already a long second down now it's gonna be third and almost 25. well the first down marker is on the 47 and a half the garden city side of the 50 but the ball is right now on the 31. uh hogan hogan's mistake there is he went and cocked his arm and he should have got rid of it either thrown it to his receiver or thrown it away but as soon as he pulled the ball down most of the garden city uh defense was holding a team meeting there even at third and 21, Garden City playing close to the line of scrimmage. Hogan, take the snap, throws it immediately. Little uh, bubble screen that was incomplete. And the ball hits the ground. Garden City picks it up. There's no whistle, and it could be a touchdown. It's got to be. They must have said that was a uh, backwards pass instead of a forwards pass. And that's a touchdown for the Cougars. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to see eight. You're not going to see 18 different uh, sides of that. That's uh, they were trying to throw the old bubble screen where they have three receivers. Somebody backs up, gets the ball, and that went behind them. And as soon as it got behind them, that's a lateral, Evan, and uh, that's six points. Yeah, and that uh, that pass was intended for Kubiak and Rayburn for Garden City was able to pick it up, showing good presence of mind. Not didn't hear a whistle. You know, you play till you hear the echo of the whistle. I've been told. Uh, and uh, he picked it up, ran it in, and that's uh, that's six points for Garden City. And here comes Alexandra Sherlock to make the kick. Uh, here the ex or, uh, the extra point. She is uh, kicking today for Garden City. Their normal kicker, Nick Schroeder, not here. Plays for the varsity football team, and that one's good. Once again, Nick Schroeder not here today plays for the varsity uh, soccer team and uh, he's off playing soccer they had a game tonight so uh, Alexandra Sherlock uh, fills in and she's gonna be doing the field goals and do the extra points here tonight ladies and gentlemen uh, you have just seen history I think that's the first point in the history of Garden City football scored by a female and I think we ought to mark the tape and uh, 30 years from now when they do the 60th year compilation of uh, Garden City Sports. That'll be on the tape. Oh yeah, <laughs> and here we see uh, the head coach Scott Murray talking to his guys, getting a little huddle, letting them know what uh, what he's expecting of them. And uh, Garden City come out here to kick the field goal. I don't think I would have guessed or kick the kick the ball off. I don't think I would have guessed that the first uh, points in this game were scored by a defense. That would not have been my well, suspicion. Well, so far, if you go back in each drive. A penalty stop Clarenceville in the first drive. Bad uh, execution of uh, bad, bad execution uh, in the backfield for Garden City stopped them, and a turnover stopped Clarenceville the next time they had the ball. So the defenses have really haven't stopped anybody. Johnson kicks that one off straight to Hogan, and uh, he was an up back there on the uh, kickoff, but he uh, managed to handle the ball and uh, carried up for a few yards. And the ball came loose and number three Bean fell on it. Uh, oh. But uh, this could be an exciting game. Both offenses are not clicking yet and the de uh, they're stopping themselves. Yeah, it's been a, a, a couple of pro. I mean, they've had sacks, you know, there's been a couple penalties, um, bad exchanges on Garden City's part. 
Let's see, uh, let's see what they got for us in this series. Hogan to take the pistol snap. He hands it off to number 22. That's Hill, and able to push the pile. Oh, the ball comes out. Garden City football. Oh my gosh. Good play. Able to knock the ball away. Pick it up. That's number two for Garden City. Rayburn all over the place. That's the second uh, second fumble he's picked up. We got a replay of that too. That uh, Garden City, the surge of the uh, offensive line kept pushing, pushing, pushing. And sometimes when, the, when you got all you can out of the play, hit the ground because everybody's in there grabbing at the ball, trying to rip it out. And uh, that play, uh, the longer you stood up, the longer Garden City had a time to rip that ball out of there. And now Hubs comes back to work for Garden City, able to gain it's about seven on that one. So that'll make it second and three after getting the turnover. Like I said already, Rayburn, sophomore for Garden City, two huge plays by that underclassman. Garden City hasn't had to show anything. They are just in that uh, big full house backfield and Everybody's crumbled up, and there's there's another handoff off the tackle. There's Seeger, and he's able to dodge at least one tackle and dive for at least two yards. So it looks like it's going to be third and one here. Uh, one, and Garden City is still just sticking with this uh, big package. And watch the hurry up. All everybody faces the sideline. They get to play. They don't even. They're not even huddling up. That way, Clarenceville can't change their personnel. Hubs takes that one through a big hole and able to get the first down gain of about five. Well, if they continue to play like this, watch, I mean, look at that, Evan. Everybody's facing the sidelines. Uh, we, they're going to get a couple substitutions in here, but everybody's facing the sidelines. There is no huddle. Big number 77 is going to get over the ball here, and then, and uh, they're ready to go. Now they got a couple of wide receivers out there. That's Spizak and Whitfield lined up wide, as well as somebody on the opposite side who I cannot see from here. Hubs, oh, that's Seeger. Hubs fakes the handoff, a little option play, and runs it forward for two. It'll be second and eight for Garden 72 City. 72 for Clarenceville, a little slow getting up. But yeah, he just handed the ball off. Uh, Fake the handoff, there's a hole there. The first runner goes through, and he follows him through the hole. Now that's a pretty textbook option play. Follow your blockers, you know, take the lane that's the easiest. And uh, once again, getting a sign from the sidelines. Now we got number 81 for Garden City coming in to play wide out. That's Tinsley. Well, this is as wide open as the Garden City offense has been. They haven't split anybody out until now. And the handoff's up the middle to number 44, Gian Grande. And he's able to dive forward for about four. The well, take a good look at those big numbers there, 52, 69, 77, 75, and 74. Those are some big boys. <laughs> and they they are literally looking, give us the play. We want to go hit these guys. Yeah. Watch them. They're going to just create uh, big amounts. The back is not even being touched until he gets three, four yards. Well, that's, uh, that's how you, you hope to draw it up. Hubs picks that one up and throws an interception across the field. Wide receiver wasn't even looking, and he throws it right into the arms of the Clarenceville player. That's number 81 for Clarenceville, Jermel Johnson, the senior free safety and cornerback for the Trojans. 77, England's going to turn around and tell Hubs, you hike the ball because the last two drives, you know, you have put the ball in the wrong spot. And that was right to the mm -hmm. corner. The corner didn't even have to move. No. It was Merry Christmas, there's the ball. And uh, a couple months early. So once attack. again, once again, offense is stopping themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, here's Hogan to throw. Gets the pass off, does not complete it to Bean. Unable to hang on to that one. Garden City. Mitchum. Was, a, was covering on that. Brandon Mitchum, the junior for Garden City. And Hogan still with this uh, trips look that they've been going with a little bit. 
Hogan takes a snap, and he's going to keep it, running off the right tackle, but he is stuffed. Uh, for looks like uh, no gain there on second down, so it'll be third and ten, and uh, this will be an interesting play because Clarenceville hasn't been able to, they've gotten one first down by my count so far. Nick, Nick DeHater on the tackle. Uh, watch uh, the Hogan on the quarterback. He's got his right foot forward, and he's almost facing his sideline. Most of his skilled players are to his right hand, but he's almost, he's facing the left side, side of the play, uh, the field there. Watch, he's got a unique uh, stance there in the shotgun. He's almost giving away which way he wants to go. Hmm. And uh, the quarter will expire right there. You can hear the, the gun uh, hopefully picked up on our microphones, or otherwise I'm just lying. But uh, that'll be the end of the quarter. What have you seen so far, Ted? that uh, makes you hopeful or, or, or what have you about Garden City's chances here. They've well, played well, pretty sloppy ball. I'll tell you what I haven't ball. seen. They've played sloppy ball. Uh, a couple fumble recoveries. Uh, Clarenceville and 0-3 team, usually 0-3 teams give you a lot of opportunities to pick up uh, turnovers. But I have not been impressed with the ball handling by the quarterback Hubs is on three plays that have been significant. Uh, two pitch outs, the one was low and in front of the ball carrier, carrier, the other one was behind him, and then on the one pass, a little slant cut where the receiver takes two steps, looks inside, he led him too much and he threw the ball right to the corner, and so Garden City has really stopped themselves. Uh, you know, I'm not taking anything away from Clarenceville, but the offense has really st uh, shot themselves in the foot. A couple of tough plays uh, with Hubs, you know, unable to, to connect a few times, and uh, that'll 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 hurt you. But they do have the offense or the defensive uh, score, so they are up seven to nothing here. And uh, here comes Hogan. A little indecisive, and uh, you can't do that against this mismatch on the uh, trenches. Yeah, and Hogan is drag down there was a fumble which I didn't see the fumble here okay my director's talking in my ear and telling me wrong information excuse me everybody that's well listening. Evan as you as you get more and more uh, into the profession here you'll find out that you never listen to the directors. <laughs> I'm sure Gibby is happy to hear that there's a reason they hide directors in the truck yeah that's right we're up here talking Oh, gosh. Oh, okay. Hogan, and he does have that interesting stance right now. You can see, see that? His. See that stance? Oh, I guess he's up back. Uh, fourth down, and they're punting. Back to number five for Garden City. That's Mitchum, and uh, he's able to take it back to about the 41 of Clarenceville. So Garden City with pretty darn good field position here after the punt and uh, let's see if they can get something going. Well, Garden City's had great field position this whole game. The, the, the line, they, uh, they have played very conservatively. Let's see if they open it up here and uh, it looks like they are. They are. They're in that spread formation. Uh, poor receivers. And they, that's Hubs just running it straight up the middle for 10. That's a good game there for Garden City. Very close to the first down. And they are giving him the first down, okay. First and 10 now for Garden City, still split out with those four wide receivers, one running back, and they're trying to run it up the middle again and it just gets stuffed. Very interesting formation. There's four receivers, but two of them are slot receivers and uh, at some point, Garden City's going to run a beer formation with the one back and two backs on right off of the uh, line of scrimmage. And these two backs are spread out a little further than the normal. So there's four receivers. It's kind of like a modified beer here. Hmm. And the Hubs takes a snap, fakes the handoff, and reverses it around the end, able to get to the 10. Ooh, and he just gets dragged down there at the 10 yard line. For a second I thought he was gonna go after he broke that first tackle. And that'll be a first down for Garden City. Well, Hubs has proved the best, the best play for Garden City is him take, 
touching the ball. They started the game with a quarterback sneak, and every time he touches the ball, uh, he runs it, good things happen. And he has had most of the touches today. Hubs hands it off up the middle. Number 44, Gian Grande, able to rumble his way down to the one yard line. Great shot from our camera in the end zone right there, showing Gian Grande. But uh, yeah, you, you'll see, look at the big lines taking their thing. They, they kind of look at their counterparts in Clarence Trail and just say, hey, we're coming after you. And Hubs takes it himself, dives and gets the touchdown for Garden City. Six points, put it on the board. Tyler Hubs once again just, just playing that same dive play right up the middle and uh, able to get the score. We're talking uh, 1930s football here. No need to do anything fancy. Uh, get the big guys up front uh, knocking heads. And uh, when you have that, if you have an advantage on the line of scrimmage, take it. And once again, it'll be Alexandra Sherlock to kick the extra point. She made the first one. We will be witnessing here uh, history again. There it is. It's up and it's good. That's history. That's the second point that a girl has scored in Garden City history. Well, you can't knock. I think she's a soccer player, right? I'm sure. I mean, you can't knock Coach uh, Zapula's soccer team last. These uh, young ladies uh, went the furthest uh, Garden City team has ever gone in the districts and regionals last year, and one of their own is sitting on the field in a football uniform uh, scoring extra points. Yeah, and I've gotten <laughs> the uh, the chance to call two of their, their soccer games. I watched them play twice, win twice, once against Dearborn and once against uh, Detroit Renaissance. No. Belleville, Southgate, I can't remember. But it is fun to watch them. They do a very good job, and I'm always impressed by how talented their team is. Uh, they've got a few players. Uh, one that I would like to mention right now is uh, Yankaski. Very talented young lady. She was a sophomore when I first saw her. Junior this past year. She'll be a, coming up to her senior season. Very talented young lady. Uh, and fast, too. Amazing speed. Anyway, uh, Garden City going to kick it off. Cody Johnson take the kick. And this one's up and deep. Clarenceville able to wrangle it there and get up to the 35, maybe the 34 yard line. And they'll take over first and 10 for Clarenceville. Well, Clarenceville has not uh, found their identity tonight on the field here uh, as far as the offense goes. They, They've uh, tried a couple passes, uh, completed one underneath. Uh, I think they've got two first downs so far, but uh, they've had a number of fumbles. They've stopped themselves, and uh, one of the fumbles turned into six, uh, six points. So uh, they need to get something going here, and Hogan's going under center here. And uh, we have a flag on the play. Not sure what Man. this is about. Dead ball foul on the offense. Failure to wear required equipment prior to the snap. That is a five-yard penalty. First down. All right, it's an equipment uh, penalty. Hmm. Somebody not have their chin strap strapped or something. Chin strap or mouth guard or. Well, I mean that's a that's a penalty all for for player safety. You don't want them out there with uh, their equipment undone. You know you don't want any of these kids to get hurt. And uh, Hogan under center. Takes the snap, hands it off. That's Hill, number 22, and he able to get back that penalty yardage and more down at about the 43. Hill's a tall uh, young man. He's kind of lanky, runs that with a uh, kind of like an Ed George, Eddie George uh, stand up run mm -hmm. and uh, got a nice run there. One of the better, you know, the first drive, uh, that uh, Clarenceville had, this. they stopped themselves with a penalty. Under center again, Evan. Santoy and Hill in the backfield. Hogan hands it off to Hill again, and he's able to get a couple. And uh, they list here, I got Hill listed here at 6'1", 215. So that's a big, that's a big kid. Number 70 fell to the ground there, uh, Jacob Ga uh, Gass. And uh, he reached out a hand and tripped up Hill as he went by him. Good heads up play there. Able to get the shoestring tackle. 
And now it's third and five for Clarenceville. They have to feel that this is a big, big moment in the game. They certainly could use this first down. A little bit of motion. Hogan takes it, pitches it to Hill, able to barrel his way. Wow, lowers the shoulder to get the first down. Able to get up across the 45 to the 47 yard line. Interesting defense there for Garden City as they had three down linemen, five linebackers. So it was kind of like a 5 3 or a modified 4 3, but they only had three people with their hands on the ground. Um, I've seen. Uh, Scott Murray running off at defense with all 11 standing up. Once again, he's got three down. Be interesting to see how they're able to cope with this seems like the surge that uh, they're giving Hill. And here he goes outside. You got one man to beat. 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, five touchdown for the Livonia Clarenceville Trojans. And that was just, he just outran everybody there. Well, Hill basically, basically the, the outside linebacker on that side went inside. And uh, once he vacated his uh, responsibility, Hill got to the outside. And, and uh, there was, once he got to the outside, nobody was going to catch him. He, uh, he, he had them beat all the way. So a miscue, misassignment on the defense, on that 3-5 defense, uh, you still have to stay home. And, and Clarenceville took advantage on that. Oh, certainly. Able to get outside. Here's the extra point for Clarenceville. Kicked. It's good. And that's number 23, Fife, the senior kicker for Clarenceville, able to put it through the upright. I don't, you, you, the last thing you want to do is give somebody when they're down an opportunity. And uh, I think they're going to look at the film, and they're, the no, coaches 72. certainly have seen that up here. But no, no, 72. They ran a yeah, five, wasn't three defense, wasn't bumped, and I don't know if we're going to see this. But uh, um, the, ins the outside linebacker committed inside. And once he vacated, instead of going up the field and containing, mm -hmm. he went inside. Hill beat him to the outside and, and got some good blocking. Mm -hmm. But uh, once he got five yards from the line of scrimmage, he was gone. Yeah, that was, uh, I just turned the corner and just turned on the Jets and able to outrun everybody. Very impressive. Certainly been a bright spot today for Clarenceville. It has, uh, has been James Hill. And... Uh, well, you saw what they did there, Evan. They just put the quarterback, instead of that uh, shotgun or pistol look, they went right under center and said, okay, um, we're going to try to just, uh, and they went off eat left and right, the corners. They didn't run anything up the middle. They just think, we got speed, we can beat you outside. And at that time, they were successful. Yep. And here's Fife with the kickoff. Chip shot back to Hubs. He runs up the right sideline, ooh, and takes a big hit up high he got at the 19. He, he picked that one up inside the 10, and he got back, what, to the 20? 19, 20, 19? yeah. Okay. Well, now the challenge here is Clarenceville wants to stop uh, Garden City. This is the deepest Garden City has started all game in their own territory. By so far. A three and out here would give uh, uh, momentum back to the kids in the white shirt. Certainly. So. Certainly would. And it looks like they're going to go with this spread out set that they went with on the last drive where they were successful in scoring a touchdown. The hubs look around waiting to go. Takes the snap, hands it off up the middle, and that is a five yard gain. We got some laundry on the field though. And that's Gian Grande. Holding. Yeah, I'm certain. That it is holding. Yep, holding on the. Uh, well, we'll look at the flag. It's now the flag is what on the 22. Yeah. Okay, so it's 10 yards from the spot of the flag, so they they're going to lose about eight yards on that play. Right. Uh, holding on the offense. First down. It'll be first and 18 for Garden City. And uh, this uh, this could be dangerous, being back this far. Certainly for the team with the lead. A little screen out to the outside and maybe gains one. Nah, it looks like no gain to me. Seeger. Johnson 81 went in there, broke that up. And uh, it was the first one there. And so it's going to be second down and nasty here. Yeah, second and 17 here. 
Well, they're saying third down, that but shouldn't be they third should, down. should have lost. Well, Dan's getting kind of uh, old. It's, you got to keep reminding him. <laughs> and uh, that's the gain of maybe three. Well, they're not back to the original line of scrimmage. No. Gene Grande uh, got the ball. They're still short of the uh, 15. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dan had a birthday this week, didn't he? Uh, uh, a couple weeks ago, yeah. Really? Has it been that long? <laughs> yeah, it's been a few, oh, okay. few weeks. I got a birthday coming up on Monday. Well, we're not celebrating, so forget no, it. No, that's okay. That's okay. I didn't expect anything. Hubs hands the ball, or keeps it. Tricked me. Very conservative play calling down there in the, the, the red zone for uh, Clarenceville. Now they're going to have to punt it out of there, and Clarenceville did exactly what they wanted to after scoring that uh, long touchdown. They uh, buried Garden City deep in their own zone with a penalty, and those penalties really hurt, really hurt. So let's see if... Uh, they can blast one out of here, and uh, Clarenceville can uh, keep the momentum. And don't forget about the deep kick uh, by Fife, as well as the good coverage downfield to keep stopping at the 20 instead of a longer return. And here's Hubs with the, the punt. Oh, just got it off. It's a high one, and it bounces just out of bounds at the 43 of Garden City. So pretty good field position here for Livonia Clarenceville with five minutes and 42 seconds left in this half. Let's see if they can make something happen, maybe tie this game up. Just as Garden City started with their worst field position, Clarenceville Trojans, uh, that team from up there just short of eight mile on middle belt, one of Garden City's middle belt opponents, uh, <laughs> is gonna get the ball at their best field position. And let's see if they come out and do the same thing. Yeah, they're gonna put Hogan back under center and uh, a couple receivers to the uh, far side here comes Hogan hands it off to Hill and oh good tackle way to get a hand on his foot he is all kinds of fast that young man I think coach Fry has decided that we are faster to the outside than Garden City and Garden City is playing that 3-5 so uh, let's see if that's going to force a defensive adjustment by the Cougars, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, see if Coach Fry's right, right? There's three down linemen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it'd be interesting to see if they just widen out those five, you know, maybe give them a little more space yeah. in the middle, or, or what they do. Uh, Hogan under center, little motion here. Once again, hands off to Hill, and he is grabbed but not taken down, breaks one tackle and out of bounds after a gain of about three. Yeah, he is a handful, that young man. What they have decided is that the, the outside linebackers are coming across the line of scrimmage, and they think Hill can beat that first player. And if Hill beats that first player, he's gone. If not, he's going to lose a couple yards. But they have confidence in Hill that he can beat that player the first one, it's like one-on-one uh, -on -one in basketball. If you can beat that first player, all of a sudden it's a five-on-four game. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, Garden City outside linebackers are coming across, and Hill's beating them. Mm -hmm. And uh, this has been the last two drives. Yes, and I think they're, they're starting to think that it's, it's going to be a smart idea to put the ball in the hands of uh, a kid that's obviously a playmaker. He, uh, he's got the speed, and... Um, it was interesting because at the beginning of the game, they weren't really handing the ball off to him all that much. Uh, they had given it to Santoy a few times, um, and Hogan kept it a few times. They tried throwing the ball, and now I think they're going to what they think is probably the most... Uh, Coaches want to do things, and they practice all summer, and they get these great ideas, and they get <laughs> tapes, and they go, uh, seriously, they yeah. go to clinics, and they've got these great ideas, and then they look at their team, and in high school, I mean, you, you said 33 players. Well, I counted them when they came in. There was 25 dressed. Oh, okay. I don't, wow. They had a couple in jerseys. But but uh, you don't have a lot of uh, options here. And go with your best player. Same formation, I formation. Oh, and it's uh -huh. a dive. That was For a great call. Yeah, they tricked Garden City on that one. Evan, think about in the pros in college. You get these college quarterbacks go up there, and they look at the line of scrimmage, and, you, you know, they start yelling Omaha, Omaha, or kill, 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 and the and the Lions, and they call this second play. Yeah. Well, this is a chess game in the high school level between the coaches. Mm -hmm. the, you're not going to change the play now. Right. It's what what am I calling against? What are you going to do? So this is the coaches' chess game. 
Hogan going to throw, lofts it up. And they're going to call holding. Well, they could call holding. They could call uh, pushing. <laughs> he held him, and when he got by him, he pushed him. <laughs> Uh, it's, uh, they're going to call something on him, though. And is that, this 15 yards from the line of scrimmage? Is that the? I think it is from the line of scrimmage. Yes, and that's uh, pass interference on the defense. Uh, that pass was intended for Kubiak, but uh, unable to come up with it. Well, the chess game goes on. You've seen uh, you've seen uh, Coach Fry spread the Cougar defense by running the corners, mm -hmm. and then what he did, he needed a first down. He had him spread. He goes right to the middle of him. Mm -hmm. Now he says, "All right, maybe we can catch them coming across the line of scrimmage and get a bat, get a uh, receiver deep, mm -hmm. and uh, he gets a penalty call." So, so far, the last five, ten plays, success goes to Coach Fry. Yes, he's uh, this drive and the last one have they've really been able to move the ball. Uh, Hogan doing a good job of uh, kind of managing what what needs to happen. Looks like the refs are having a, a little bit of a confab right now. They're not really. Well, these right. guys probably had to work late and rushed over here tonight to play, and you know, it's good. It's first down, though. Yeah, first and ten for the Trojans. 4:31 on the clock, 14-7, Garden City, and uh, Clarenceville threatening to tie this one up in the red zone. Yep, scrimmaging from the 15-yard line, and that is a run up the center, basically held up there. Now, Evan, why do you do that? Well, you've spread them out. Now, if you touch the mid, get him to run up the middle, you might get him to come back in, and that opens up the outside. So each, that play, you want to get yardage, but it might set up the next play. Mm -hmm. Certainly. And it's just like a, a pitcher maybe throwing a, throwing a curveball or something, setting him up for the fastball or vice versa. Still a 3-5 for the Cougars. They're Hogan. sneaking up, though. They're sneaking up. Good Hogan pass. to throw. Lofts it up in the back corner of the end zone. Almost caught on a diving play by number five. That's Dooley for... Uh, Is that number 10 on the coverage there? I believe so. That's number 10, Castengay. Castengay was, uh, really didn't see the ball. He was watching the eyes of the intended receiver. When he saw his eyes open up, he just kind of uh, uh, got in front of it. But uh, his back was to the ball the whole time. It was a nice effort by Dooley to make a play on that ball. That was a that was not an easy play. Hogan under center, third and ten from the 15, and this is uh, important here. And they hand it off to Hill, who is immediately corralled in the backfield. Got to be careful. 22 <laughs> fell on the pile <laughs> afterwards and could have put. Picked up a late hit. I was thinking exactly the thing. That's the captain for Garden City, Nick DeHater, number 22, who also plays defensive back, whether it be. It wasn't dirty by no means, but he was a second late, and you just never know what the guy in white, the white hat's going to uh, see. Yeah. Doesn't he know not to wear white? It's after Labor Day. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's wearing stripes, too, so that says something about his fashion. Yeah, something. Field goal to town. <laughs> we got a uh, Fife to kick it down and bounces. No good. No good. So Garden City dodges the bullet there and stops uh, the Trojans at the last, probably the last possible moment from scoring. Well, and once, it's a, once again, 14 to seven, Garden City over the Trojans. Once again, sometimes coaches get too smart for their own good. A lot of coaches, and I tell this story a lot. There's a coach in Monroe Jefferson at one point. He ran the same play 13 times in a row, and his, his theory was you didn't stop at the first 12. What are the odds that you're going to stop at the 13th? <laughs> and if you didn't stop at the 13th, you knew the 14th time it was coming at you. Yeah. Garden City going to scrimmage here from the 27-yard line. Well, Garden City wants to hold the ball, get a couple first downs. They lead 14 to 7. They'd like to score here, but they certainly don't want to give it up and give it back to Clarenceville and tie it before half. Second and four. Hubs hands it off up the middle. And that's uh, Dean Grande. Dean Grande off. He almost, uh, they gr they tried to tackle the ball. Number 52 went for a train ride with him. He <laughs> grabbed the ball. Gian Grande just reached around. There's Hubs. But 2.31 on the clock and ticking. 
Balls at the 40, Garden City could just get a little score here and uh, kind of put this game away. A little two minute drill and Hubs hands it off once again to Gian Grande and unable to get much. I think he uh, maybe got, lost, maybe he lost a half a yard. Well, he got to the line of scrimmage and a bunch of angry Trojans just pushed him back. <laughs> you get those Greeks that are mad at you, they'll, well, Greek, no, it wasn't Greeks, were they? Troy was no, across, no, that was in, it Troy was, was across the sea. Present day Turkey. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> I didn't think we were gonna talk about that today. Yeah, well, you know, you never know what you're talking about. No, I never do. I talked about uh, <laughs> handcuffs and all other oh. stuff with uh, Phil last time. They gotta throw a flag on that. Hubs, and there it is. Hubs basically turned around and said, oh my God, OMG, and just heaved the ball. Yeah. That was intentional uh, grounding. <laughs> I'm, I'm in trouble, and 14 other different variations of that. <laughs> yeah, he. Uh, I'm sure, I, I know on the cameras we didn't <laughs> see his eyes, but I'm sure his eyes would have been big as dinner plates there trying to get that ball out. Now, if that's intentional grounding, that's also a loss of down. Yes, I believe it would be. And uh, it looks like the referees are having a little discussion here, unsure. They didn't call a, a personal foul against Clarenceville, did they? Well, I only see the one flag on the field, so I, I wouldn't think so. No, but they, I guess we have to have multiple conversations here about what, what the deal is. Flag's getting picked up. There is no foul to the play. <laughs> well, I'm a Garden City fan, folks, but uh, the Garden City just uh, got a break. Yeah, the Hubs had no intention of that ball. There wasn't a receipt. The closest uh, Garden City uh, player to that was on the on the sidelines. Yeah. I, I lucks out there, I guess. Third and 10 for Garden City. And uh, Hubs probably big breath there, not getting the penalty. Under center. Hands it off up the middle, stopped after a gain of two. Gian Grande with well, the carry. Clay, the clock stopped, dollar 36 on it. Uh, again, they're going to get a punt. Probably have a little under a minute to go here. No, they'll they'll have to they'll have about a minute 20 because they stopped the clock here. So that'll be. Not very much time, especially if Garden City gets a good punt off. Don't, uh, don't think this is easy. Remember, they came darn close to blocking the last one. Mm -hmm. And uh, Garden City, uh, um, basically, uh, you know what? You, you, an, you know, I'm sure your daddy told you, never give a sucker an easy break. And uh, <laughs> Garden City is giving Clarenceville an easy break here. They're keeping them in. Clarenceville's 0-3. Uh, and, and and you you mentioned it. They're not a huge school. They're a big school. They they play in C and sometimes B, you know, in, in in the division depending on their population for that year. But uh, um, they're a proud school. They're a proud history. Um, there's a little timeout. We'll talk about a Tim Shaw, you know, especially over the last month with the. Uh, uh, the dunking for uh, Lou Gehrig's disease over there. Uh, they have a player, Tim Shaw, that played for Penn State after leaving Clarenceville, who has now got it, uh, ALS, and uh, so they're they've been in the news that way. But they're they have a proud history in football, and uh, they're own three. They need this game. Certainly, um, the Hubs to punt. And he gets a good one off. It bounces at the 35 and stops at about the 33. So that's where the Trojans will scrimmage from. First and 10 for Livonia Clarenceville. And that's where the Trojans were when they handed the ball off to Hill and he uh, beat uh, the whole Garden City team to the left side of their uh, defense and uh, scored. Yeah, very, very quick and able to uh, just beat everybody. I couldn't. Uh, couldn't believe how fast he was. Garden City's best uh, players to keep everything into the middle. Clog it up, bottle it up. They're They've only completed one pass has Clarenceville. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. They're back in the shotgun, which they haven't been successful out of. Hogan steps up to the pocket and is immediately grabbed 
Number 70 for Garden City is the first guy I saw grab anybody. Fox. And that's Gas. You have Fox, Gas. too. Fox is uh, 40. 40, yeah. Well, you know, Hogan, when he gets that ball, he dances around and he holds the ball here. Mm -hmm. And he holds the ball down by his numbers. And by the time he wants to go bring it up, he's in trouble. You got to get that ball, keep it high, mm -hmm. and get rid of it quick. And he's, uh, he's dancing back there too much, you know? Yep. And one of the guys that I'm sure, you know, everybody watches in the NFL is Peyton Manning. And it's always interesting to watch his mechanics because they're oh. so good. And uh, we got a stoppage in play. Timeout Garden City. Well, Garden City sees 44 seconds on the clock. And now they're thinking, well, we're, we're, we're marching uh, Clarenceville backwards. And maybe if so something happens here, we can pick up a quick score, mm -hmm. field goal. But if I'm... Uh, if I'm Clarenceville, I'm I'm happy to be down only seven here. Let's run this clock off and go plan something. Let's not try to force the issue. Certainly, yeah. They I I, I think that that's probably their best bet. They're up by a score. You know they they may or may not have good field position. They should just concentrate on stopping Clarenceville here. Certainly, uh, number 22 Hill because uh, he is a lightning in a bottle. And they don't want to let that lightning out, I'm sure. I'm not sure if Garden City anybody is as fast as Hill. So if you give Hill, you get Hill one on one in the open field, you got to give the advantage to Clarenceville. So although he is not lining up in the backfield, he's lining up split out wide well, in the slot. They want him to get behind and see if they can get him the ball. They're looking his way. Yep. They're going there he to goes. Him. And, and uh, Hill, Hill has got to break off that line and just see if he gets if dare Hogan to overthrow him. And uh, that's number 42 on the coverage for Garden City, whose number I don't have. Maybe I missed. Oh, it's 12. Excuse me, 12. The coverage. That's Murray uh, on Hogan or on uh, Hill, and he just he was already a step back, five yards off the line. So it's basically it's a, you're going to see Johnson and Hill come to this side now. That was a. Uh, well, many planes flying over Garden City. Usually it's a plane is when Dan's leaving the field. <laughs> Look at him. Hogan took a shot there on that incomplete pass intended for Dooley down the right sideline, and it'll be fourth and 15 here. Well, this is why Murray took, the, uh, Coach Murray for Garden City took the time out. He knows he's going to, there's that, the two plays took eight seconds off the <laughs> clock. Now, Garden City is going to get a chance to A, run the ball back, and B, uh, throw one in the end zone and try to get a, or a field goal here. Mm -hmm. So that's why that timeout was at the 44 second mark. The punt almost blocked by Garden City. Takes a bounce. Hubs thought about grabbing it. Excuse me, that's not Hubs. That's number six. Clark thought about picking it up, but didn't. Garden City will scrimmage from their own 38. 26-1 on the clock here in the second quarter. This uh, Wayne, uh, Western Wayne Athletic Conference Red Division game. Garden City's 2-0 in the conference. Yep. Trying to go 3-0. Uh, I'm sure we're going to get a schedule here. Our, our, our graphics are down, I guess. Uh, the schedule um, is going to get harder. There's some, uh, there's some good teams in here, but uh, Garden City... It, they want to win the division. They want to get in the playoffs. Certainly, and I think that they have that shot. They win today, puts them in really good position for the rest of the season uh, to get in there. Hubs rolling out to his right, almost grabbed and throws it. Uh, incomplete, tended for number 81 for Garden City. That Tinsley. Hubs is going to ha basically have to send a note to the referee that says, I'm throwing this ball away and away from no receivers to get an intentional grounding because <laughs> there was nobody there for that pass and he was on his way down as he threw that ball. Yeah. He's uh, he's gotten away with two intentional ground. <laughs> hey, if he gets away with them, I'm sure he'd, uh, he'd say yeah, something along those lines. Hubs back to pass. Airs it out down the center of the field, picked off by Livonia Clarenceville. That's number three, Bean, 
playing center field there, able to pick that one off. 14.2 seconds left here in this first half. Garden City still leads 14 to seven, but. You gotta give Bean uh, credit because Hubs had tremendous time there. And he uh, he had six, seven seconds and, and he, Bean stayed with the receiver. And able to get that one. Now this is a play that tells you about the coach's personality. If the coach is going to go down deep, and he never gives up. He's a gunslinger. If he's uh, pragmatic, he's just going to take a knee and go. <laughs> I feel like here you just got to, you know, hike the ball, one receiver, let it be Hill, have him run as fast as he can down the field, and just right, keep it up to him. You're a gunslinger. Oh, you better believe it. All right. Hogan under center here. Looks like they're probably going to pass up. Oh, he's yeah. going to kneel down. Not a gunslinger. <laughs> Pragmatic, practical. So that'll let the clock run down to zero. Garden City still up 14 to seven over Clarenceville as we head into halftime. And you can see there for just a second, we had the uh, Cougar crazy cam that uh, we have set up down here in Garden City. And there's all the players running off the field. Yeah, there's the Cougar crazy cam. And uh, it's pretty exciting, some of the new technology we've gotten here. We got this wonderful cam. All right, we're, it's uh, halftime, Evan, and uh, we've had a good game so far. It's 14 so far. 7. We should have a good one in the second half. All right, stick with us for the next half on Omni Edition Sports. So we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. It's halftime here at Garden City High School. The Garden City Cougars taking on the Clarenceville Trojans. As with me now is Jim Neve. Jimmy Neve, we call him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because we've known two Jim Neves before him, yep. that being his dad and his grandfather. Jim is the owner of Incorporate uh, Graphics right here in Garden City, located Kitty Corner across the street from the high school. Thanks for being with us. Oh, thank you for having me. Now, you hear us uh, talking about Incorporate all the time on our broadcast because Jim and his folks provide us with all the apparel that the uh, the volunteers, the interns, everybody here at Omnidition Television and GCTV wear. He does that, and first of all, thank you for that. Oh, no problem. Uh, that, is, that is great for us and is great for all of these kids and all these people that volunteer, but that's just like one of the very many things you guys do in this community, and that's why we wanted to talk to you today at a halftime. Now, you are, let, let's talk a little bit about you. You are a Garden City kid, born and bred, right? Yep, I grew up here, you know, since I was born. Uh, my uh, grandfather, who lived down the street here, he was one of the first residents to live in Garden City. Okay. Uh, worked for the city his whole life. Um, I just love it here. And you your know. dad had Stadium Sports over stadium on Ford sports Road? Stadium Sports over there on Ford Road. And, uh, you know, I basically started doing this when I was about eight. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been drawing my whole life. So I just basically took over the family business, kind of, and uh, took it to a different level, I guess. And you have taken it to a different level because this kind of stuff has just exploded. Mm -hmm. Technology has, it used to be, Silk screening. I used Silk screening or embroidery, that was it. I used to sit and hand cut designs and draw them. It would take you hours to get maybe a one color design to look halfway decent. Now I can sit at a computer and make it look like anything you want. I mean. Yeah, now Jim just gave me this and, and you know, we're hiding behind here so no one can <laughs> see my stomach, but um, this is a great combination. This is applique, but, and I don't know how well it shows up, but you do something now called direct to print. Yeah. Which is what the, the camouflage pattern in this is, right? Yeah. Basically, the machine will print any image full color um, with no screens, no setups, uh, one-offs. 
Okay. I can print a shirt full color within five minutes. So anybody can walk in with a decent picture, yep. uh, an image. I guess it doesn't even have to be decent if they don't care. No. Any image or flash drive with a JPEG or yep. a PNG or a TIFF on it, anything, and you can just make it into a shirt? Yep. Or they can let us design it. You know, We can take something that they have their idea with, with the picture, and I can create something like I normally do and make it look really good. And, and you know, we talked about the technology, though. But I mean, now you can make caps with these embroidery machines that are all driven by computer, yep. right? Yep. And, 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 and do all that embroidery that you do that, again, used to have to be farmed out or yep. or really have some specialty equipment. And you still have specialty equipment, but yep. now it's all technology-based. Yep, and everything we do in-house, in from embroidery to applique, we have screen printing, uh, stretch of garment, we do banners, stickers, the whole deal. Anything anybody can imagine. Yep. <laughs> now, you've had a great relationship with the high school. You've had a really good relationship with Scott Murray and the Garden City Cougar football yep. team. And, and, and again, it's amazing when we were kids, if there was, you know, when I was in high school, if you could find one thing with your school name on it yeah. or with a West Tiger on it, that was a big deal. It took us forever to find the West logo for the shirt we do now. So. And, and, and now you've got as many things as anybody can go buy in the Tiger shop at Comerica Park for, the, for Garden City Cougars. Yeah. When Scott Murray got the job, I introduced myself. I went out of my way. I didn't know who he was. But, you know, him and I have clicked. You know, we've taken this concept of making a, a college look. Mm -hmm. You know, like Oregon or, you know, and just make it look as good as it can possibly look. Yeah. There's not too many high schools out there doing that. No, they have one of the most professional looks in the state. Probably. Yes, they do. Absolutely. And you do more other, other than sell him his stuff. You do a lot of work with him and a lot of work with the with the GCYA as yes. far as, as donations and, 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 and I don't want to call it charity work but fundraising work for these groups. Yeah, and we give proceeds back from everything we sell to both organizations. Um, on top of that, I will give you know, the football program uh, discounts on certain things so they can turn around and sell it themselves. Okay. Or just so the kids aren't overpaying for right. certain items. Um, it's, more of, it's more of a look for the school. I graduated here in 89, yeah. and I really love the city and the school, so I, I take care of them. Well, <laughs> That's probably the best way to say it. <laughs> one thing you told me once, uh, probably about a year ago, maybe, maybe two years ago, because you kept coming out with new stuff and more stuff and more stuff, and you mm -hmm. told me you actually felt bad <laughs> because he puts this pressure on the parents to have to shell out all this money to buy this stuff for these kids because, you know, they want something new every time. And everything you come out with, it seems to be better than the last thing you did. I felt bad at first, but now I get <laughs> – and then when I slow down and don't do it, where's the new stuff? Where's yeah. the new stuff? Come on, I need something new. I already have that. So, you know, I keep it going. <laughs> well, and it's a great look. Yeah. It's a great look. And you, and you do stuff – you do all kinds of Garden City High School stuff, whether it be for the football team or whether it be GCYA. I mean, you've got all kinds of stuff. We do there. everything from the class shirts. We do the varsity jackets. We do um, most sports. Right. You know. And you've had a lot of success with this East and West stuff, haven't you? Yes. That was something that, you know, um, Rob Phillips and I and my dad kind of, you know, kicked around. And I just – when I first opened, I'm like, I'm going to do an East shirt. Just for the heck of it, because my dad graduated in 65. Okay. It blew up. Yeah. Everyone wanted it. So then, obviously, I got a hold of you. Well, you know, because the West, you can't, you know, let the West people not have their shirt. Right. That shirt probably outsold the East shirt there for a <laughs> while. <laughs> yeah, because they closed our building. We're the saddest. Yeah. <laughs> we actually have a new shirt we're working on right now. Oh, it's cool. kind of it's kind of in the works, but it's basically a football historical shirt. Okay. With the helmets and uh, oh, the records great. and in the works hopefully okay. by homecoming it's here so all right well that'd be wonderful that would be cool so i'll show you first i appreciate <laughs> that i appreciate it. and you have had some big clients not just the local stuff that you do i mean you've been involved with some with some big music groups right um i've done stuff for eminem i've done stuff for kid rock i've done stuff for i this one band i do i deal with twisted they're a mainstay of what i do over there a lot of concert stuff um other accounts, like 89X is one of my biggest accounts. Um, the Detroit Firefighters, that's a very, very big account that I have that we are very proud that we do for. Because they print and sell for disabled um, firefighters or okay. retired firefighters, and they support those. Uh, so we're very proud that we print that stuff for them. Fantastic. And you actually moved back into Garden City. You had a shop that was, yes. you know, maybe a seven iron out of town. Yep. But yep. you actually moved into Garden City after your business picked up. We were there for three years, and we outgrew it. And we – I've been looking at this building since it was a – I think it was a pet store. Okay. I kept driving by, going to my par – my partner owns Fanatic View. And I'd go over there, and I'd see this pet store. I'm like, Greg, we should look at this. And then when it became available, I'm like, no-brainer. 
had to do it. Yeah. And I'm outgrowing that building already, <laughs> but <laughs> but I'm not going anywhere. We can expand on that building right. now. And so that was one of the reasons you bought yes, that lot. Yes, and that's what we plan on doing. We're going to probably expand on this building and okay. make it bigger. Fantastic. But well, it's again, been great. We want to thank you for your contribution to GCTV and, and being our apparel sponsor, if you will, <laughs> our, our apparel provider, the guys. Yeah, love everything that you come up with. Uh, there's a baseball jersey that that you did over in the springtime yep. that the guys absolutely love. Those came out really good. And uh, and we appreciate all everything you do for us and everything you do in the community. Okay. All right. It's halftime here at Garden City High School. The Cougars taking on the Clarenceville Trojans. We'll have more second half action from Garden City High School right after this watch. I was the lucky one. When I was drowning in a Lake Michigan rip current, two brave strangers in a kayak saved my life. But far too many people aren't that lucky. So what I want to do now is help you avoid rip currents by checking with the National Weather Service or the beach for warnings. If you're caught in the grip of a rip current, flip, float, and follow the current until you can break free. And before you try to save someone else, save yourself by grabbing a flotation device. Learn more by Googling rip current safety. You've probably received one of these in the mail, the juror questionnaire, which may have found its way here. Next time, don't throw it away. Ignoring your summons is illegal, and you could end up in jail. To streamline the juror selection process, the Third Circuit Court Questionnaire is now combined with the summons to create the new juror questionnaire and summons. Just log on and complete the form online, or fill in the questionnaire and mail it back. After all, it's better to be here than in jail.